joined us, Professor Muiz Hussain, who is the chief executive at the Institute of Mind Sciences and the creator of the fourth dimension. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Uh, so while we're talking about perspective here, something that I noticed your work talks about is the power of imagination. Can you tell us about that? The human uh, mind has uh, two amazing abilities. And according to one of the research by a gentleman called Jose Silva in the early 40s, he found out that geniuses have two uh, powerful faculties. One is visualization and one is imagination. If a person is able to visualize uh, events that have passed, especially the ones that have been uh, good for him or her, in colors, then that ability helps him to imagine much better. Now, imagination is a faculty which uh, quite strangely has nothing, sometimes has nothing to do with the past. For example, people have imagined things which never existed uh, within the environment. Uh, neither they've heard about it, neither they've seen it, nor they've touched it, felt it, smelled it. Mm. And yet they were able to ima imagine something which eventually over a period of time came into physical existence. So this faculty of the mind is responsible for all new development, new research, breakthroughs in science, medical science, and everything that we see around in our life from a a cell phone to a rocket to a satellite. Everything is based on human imagination. A couple of years back, I remember when I was uh, a child, we used to have a series called Star Trek on television. And in that Star Trek, they used to have something which at that time people didn't understand. And they thought this was all foolish, like a cell phone and a Twitter and a laptop. But then eventually what the human can conceive and believe it can achieve. This is the power of human imagination. Wow. So, Professor Hussain, something that you're talking about is uh, thinking and then bringing that thing into uh, existence, into reality. And related to that, I have a question related to the law of attraction. And mm -hmm. many books have been written on this. I want to ask about your take on it. Okay. Uh, the law of attraction is a recent find a couple of four to five years back ago. The Holy Quran uh, <coughs> talked about it 1400 years back ago. In one of the verses of the Holy Quran, uh, Allah says that whatever you think, I'll give it to you. It's called guman. The word is guman. So if a person is able to think something persistently with feelings and faith, somehow he's able to materialize that. So that is the law of attraction. But there are certain requisites which are required for that law to work. A lot of people think most of the time, but they never get what they want or what they think. Uh, the important, there are two elements which are required. Number one is faith. Uh, in a higher reality, in things that happen in our life. And the second is feeling. If you have appropriate feeling as if what you want has already been achieved. Normally people tend to think in the future. When you think about something in the future, it always remains in the future. It never occurs. But if you tend to think that you're, it is happening right now, uh, you are using it, you are driving the car, you got the money, you got health, whatever it is, then somehow because your brain cannot distinguish between real and unreal, for example, if you if you found of a particular kind of a food, and if you close your eyes and imagine that food is in front of you, with think about the aroma, the taste, the color, you start getting gastric juices in your stomach, although the food is not present there. So mm -hmm. the brain cannot distinguish whether you are imagining it or it's really there. Using that to our advantage is we create certain images in our mind of something that hasn't appeared, hasn't come or hasn't appeared. Yet we believe that it has already happened. The moment we start seeing it has happened, it actually begins to happen. That is the law of attraction. Okay, so that was a great explanation there, uh, Professor. Something also that you've talked about in your work is how the brain should be geared towards a solution-oriented approach. What can you tell us about that? See, first of all, we need to, as masses, we need to understand that we focus more on problems. The more you focus on problems, one of the principles of the mind is that the Whatever you focus on becomes larger, becomes bigger. So we focus on problems. All the time we're talking about problems. Because we talk about problems, the problems tend to increase. We never have been taught to think about solutions. So if you think about solution or the way out, then the mm -hmm. solution will come to you easily. So one thing that we need to remember and understand, let's focus on solution. Talk less about problems. We mm -hmm. all have problems. Problems are a part of life. Every problem helps us to become more stronger, more better. Every failure leads us to more success. People need to understand this. So let's start focusing on solution. How can I get rid of this? How can I achieve this? What is stopping me? What can I do? 
some of these uh, questions, if put forward to a mind, and if a person starts writing answers to these questions, the chances are he will find a solution. Yes. Uh, and on that very important point, uh, uh, Professor Hussain, I also want to link this to Mr. Baloch's real life example. So throughout mm -hmm. your life, do you think that you were focusing a solution or 